evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's performance. As together we remember and celebrate the memorable Frank's Bandstand Show, hosted by our very own Frank Cameron, which was the Halifax Jazz Class. And of course, this was the Halifax segment of the Music Hop series from 1964 to 1968. Who in this room remembers that? Oh, that's why you're here. <laughs> now, most of the talent showcased was native to Nova Scotia, though a few celebrities from other provinces managed to sneak in from time to time. Now, the studio band you re may remember was known as the Offbeats, later called the New Five Sounds, with regulars including Patricia McKinnon, Karen Oxley, DJ Jeffries, and Davey Wells. Various local rock bands were featured in the show, among them some you may remember, such as the Great Scots, the Axemen, and the Brunswick Playboys, which we have one of their original members on stage tonight. But tonight we also want to pay tribute to our guest of honor, Frank Cameron, for his lifetime contributions to the world of broadcasting and music throughout our province. His career is the soundtrack of radio and television in the Maritimes, and known as Nova Scotia's first rock and roll DJ, Frank's musical influence is why I know many of you are here tonight. The music our band will bring you tonight will feature many of the songs that were performed on the original Frank's Bandstand episodes, you may even want to sing along to the same familiar jingles that were presented on commercial breaks, as well as see some of the dance moves that were used on the dance floor. Anyone here, were you a dancer on one of the shows? Okay, a few hands. Yes, so this evening's performance will be presented by Oakwood Terrace and Seaside FM. And along with their amazing volunteers, both of our organizations have such dedicated volunteers that give so much of their time and energy for their community. Together, we want to bring you back to a place in time and reminisce together the music from days gone by. And now I want to introduce to you tonight our band leader, Aaron Raymond, who will introduce the songs presented in this evening's performance. Aaron. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to open the show with a set of songs that will be sure to have you singing along. Many of them were favorites throughout the season of the original Frank's Bandstand days. But first, welcome to the stage tonight, your 1960s house band. <laughs> Thank you. 
How's everybody doing? Well, I did rock and roll music, and I really like the chance to play. Crystals recorded a song called Da Do Ron Ron. It reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100 as the song relates the joy of a gal who has found the guy done with appropriate good rock feeling. The Crystals song was ranked on the Rolling Stones list as the 500 greatest songs of all time. Donna Marilyn, a familiar voice from Seaside FM, is going to sing this for you all tonight.
you ready to do the twist? Everyone remember to, how to do that? Alright, hold your twist on your seat. Take it away, Ron. by Petula, Petula Clark called Downtown. This 1964 version became an international hit, reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100.
are now going to talk a little bit about the guest of honor, Frank Cameron. And so, I know many of you probably grew up listening to Frank on air. Yeah. <laughs> So Frank Cameron has had a lifetime career in broadcasting and music. Many of you may rem remember his early radio broadcasting days. Frank knew he wanted to be on the radio since he was seven years old. And his dream started way back in New Glasgow where he and his friend Sandy Hoyt would get together in their basements with their own little radio station. And although it didn't go anywhere, in 1953, CKEC arrived in New Glasgow and they both thought they had finally had their opportunity. With about 250 big watts, they started a high school program on Saturdays that reached most of Pictou County. In 1955, Frank was working full-time for the station and started pushing boundaries by trading some traditional Celtic tunes for some newfangled rock and roll music. He didn't always get away with it though. So instead, he tried to trick his mature listeners into accepting this new music by adding a Mick in the artist's name, such as Elvis Mick Presley or Bill Mick Haley. Very clever, Frank. Now, in 1956, Frank decided to move to Truro to work at CKCL. And while on the air for CKCL, Frank was still pushing boundaries with his pop and rock and roll music, gaining many new young fans from his various programs. One popular show he hosted was on Sundays at 1 o'clock, playing the top music hits. Now this was before YouTube or streaming services such as Spotify, so radio was the only time young people could find out what the latest trending song or their favorite artist would be. And they couldn't wait for that one day of the week that they would tune into Frank and find out what new song had made the charts. The only problem was that many young people were attending Sunday morning church services with their parents. And now Frank had no idea that his rock and roll music was influencing young people to pray. <laughs> many of our residents at Oak would tell me tales of anxiously praying to God that Sunday school wouldn't go overtime. <laughs> And as soon as church was over, they would race home from church to tune into Frank's program. Some were only allowed to listen in, though, if they had been on good behavior that week. So, definitely a popular day to listen in. Now, in 1959, Frank moved to Halifax to work at CHNS, gaining many more young fans, craving the latest trending music. In 1961, he became the host of a familiar radio show that you may remember tuning into called you Call the Play. Anyone remember that one? Yeah. The show aired from 4 to 5 in the afternoons, where he played listener song requests. So one of the residents at Oakwood Terrace tells me the tale. Her name is Sharon, and she remembers rushing home from school every day to tune into this popular program. But you had to mail in your song request. So she once mailed in a song request, putting a pink ribbon bow on the outside of the envelope in hopes that Frank would choose her letter from all the others. Well, it worked, because her pink ribbon must have worked because Pink Shoelaces by Dodie Stevens was played on the air, much to her delight. Now, Frank also hosted various other shows, including his own show called The Frank Cameron Show. In 1964, thanks to the success of all of these shows, CHNS had 65% of the available radio audience, and you probably in this room were a lot of that audience. In 1964, while working for CHNS, Frank was approached by CBC to host his own bandstand show. And so the birth of Frank's bandstand began. And I know many of you are here tonight because you have fond memories of tuning into this show. And maybe you were one of the lucky ones that were selected to be a dancer. Some of you emailed me your memories, such as Pat Dunphy, who remembers that he and his girlfriend at the time lived on the Air Force Base in Beaverbank. And every now and then, an Air Force bus would pick them up at the bottom of his driveway in Lower Seattle, and off they would go to dance their feet off. He still has fond memories of those times. And he remembers that Frank was such a gracious host that always took time for everyone. Now, Frank was not only a personality for hosting music shows, he was also a spokesperson for marketing various products. Do you remember seeing him in commercials? <laughs> yes. 
Who here remembers Scotty's chips? Oh, yes. You just told us your age. Now, Walter Eaton told me a memory that he had of being on a taping of Frank's bandstand as a dancer in the early 60s. During one of those shows, Frank came up to him after a song had just ended and gave him a bag of Scotty's chips to try. After he had tried a few, Frank asked him, how are those chips? Of course, it was difficult to answer properly with his mouth full. <laughs> are you here? Is, is Walter here? Oh, there you are. <laughs> So, but it, he must have done something convincing because it turned out that Frank was doing a commercial and Walter just made the cut. So you must have said something good, Walter. But Walter said his compensation was getting the rest of the Scottish chip bag. Was that fair? I don't know. I bet they were good. Ah, oh, see? They were with Fox Sense. But Walter, you had a few tricks up your sleeve when it came to getting the proper compensation you really deserved. So Walter came up with a smart plan to be selected as a dancer for two more shows. Now, this opportunity was coveted by many young people because he had to request the tickets to be selected. Now, knowing his chances were low because he'd already been on the dance show, Walter had a few friends he brought to apply under their names for the tickets. And luckily, his friends were selected and shared their tickets with Walter. So he was in the spotlight again. <laughs> Now, Paul Kennedy, is he here tonight? Paul, yes. Paul Kennedy remembers tuning into the Music Hop programs on CBC in St. John, New Brunswick. Now, these Music Hop series, of course, were all across the country, but what he remembered from Frank's Bandstand was that one of his favorite guest bands on Frank's Bandstand show was the Brunswick Playboys from Moncton. And they had a hit song called Too Blind to See with George Hebert on the lead guitar. George, where are you? And George is on stage with us tonight. Isn't that wonderful? When the Frank's Bandstand show came to an end, Frank decided to stay on at the CBC. So in 1967, Frank left CHNS and went to work full time for CBC radio and television. During his years at CBC, his voice could be heard as an anchor on the news, weather, along with various talk shows. And he spent 32 years of his career with the CBC. And then in 1995, Frank retired from the CBC, but even after retirement, he couldn't sit still. So he spent another 10 years back at CHNS. And it was in 2005 that he was approached by Wayne Herrick, founder of Seaside FM who convinced him to bring his radio personality to 105.9 FM in Eastern Passage. And Frank has remained at Seaside hosting various radio programs while always playing music that resonates with his listening audience. And we just want to know, yeah, clap to that. And any Seaside fans in the audience, I know you've probably seen some of their familiar faces. You'll see the booth set up. Um, but we are so grateful for all the staff that volunteer at Seaside and for the amazing music that they bring across our ears. It's the only station in town. <laughs> in 2015, though, Frank wrote a memoir of his life titled, I Owe It All to Rock and Roll and the CBC. And in this book, he's included stories and memories of his life in broadcasting. The book take its, takes its readers from Frank's childhood to his present life, while sharing many humorous stories off and off, on and off air moments. And now this book will be available for purchase in the lobby at intermission. And Frank will be there to sign a copy if you want to take one home. I read it and I had so many belly laughs, so it'll, it's a good, quick picker-upper if you want to sit down and, and read a good book. That's the book for you. So yes, um, we just want to say that um, we're just so grateful that you've all come out to, to honor Frank with us tonight and to remember this beautiful show that was on CBC, the Frank's Bandstand Days, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Well, how about this awesome music so far? 
And we will be right back with some more great hits right after this commercial break. <laughs> Autumn's here and winter's coming soon. Nova Scotia winters can be unpredictable. That's why you need a reliable source of oil heat and service you can depend on. That's why I recommend Discount Fuel, because unlike the weather, I can tell you what to expect. Your dependable Discount Fuels oil delivery and experienced heating service technicians will be there when you need them. And that's a surer thing than the weather, which is as unpredictable as me. In 1964, Manfred Mann came out with a song you may remember that topped the chart. The song and its catchy phrase, Do Wa Diddy, joined the British invasion and became a number one hit.
of My Head was a song recorded by Little Anthony and the Imperials in 1964. This song became a Billboard Top 10 Pop Smash, reaching number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 in the Canadian RPM list in 1965. Chantel from Oakwood Terrace is going to perform this soulful song. The Vogues were an American vocal group that recorded a single called Five O'Clock Worlds. The song reached number one in Canada on the singles charts in the year of 1966. Our drummer, Nelson Taves, will showcase his vocals in performing this melodic tune.
It's all right, isn't it? It's all right. You guys have a good time? Yeah. So are we, aren't we, guys? Yeah. The dancers having fun, too? Yeah. It's all right, it's all right so far? Take it away, John. <laughs> because we, we kept getting phone calls for people wanting to attend the group. We're so glad you made this time. So if you uh, know of anyone that tried to get in and couldn't, we do have tickets for sale in the lobby for next week. It's on Tuesday, 7 o'clock, same place, same time, same time as, as the show. And also, I want to tell you about a show happening, happening at this church as well in August. And Seaside FM will be celebrating their 21st anniversary on air this summer. And yeah. And we want to celebrate this wonderful occasion by getting together and playing the genres and decades of music that they play on air. So you'll hear tunes from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. You'll hear a little bit of country, rock and roll, you name it, it's there. And so if you want to reserve tickets early, because you can see we have limited seating and, and this show sold out quickly, um, those tickets are for sale as well. So that'll be on Tuesday, August the 22nd at this location. So um, enjoy time, maybe meet with Frank, and we'll see you back here for another party. 20 minutes.
also canteen service if anyone needs a drink or a refreshment to just hold you through the night. So um, we're going to proceed with the show, but I thought this would be kind of nice to also uh, remember together Bobby Curtola and his music. Anyone fan of Bobby Curtola? So Bobby was a great friend of Frank's, and when Frank wrote his memoir, um, he wrote the foreword for it, and I thought I would read uh, a few of his lines for you. This is Bobby's words. Frank was at the top in the 60s, the number one radio personality in the Maritimes who understood the art of his business. Most people today don't realize the pioneering role Frank played in those early years. He was one of a handful of DJs across Canada who had direct access to all teams and their individual markets through their radio shows, and he was a huge celebrity. Over the years, teenagers would phone into his shows, chat, request their favorite songs, and talk about their life. He literally introduced people like me to his fans. Most of us early recording artists had no other way to reach our audience except through radio or the press, and radio was the best way. Everything in an artist's career changed if a station like CHNS or a guy like Frank Cameron played your record. Before there was what we call today interactive, Frank was already talking to his fans, asking them what they liked, playing their requests and their dedications. He knew what they wanted to hear and played it. Those were the days of what the music industry called personality radio. And that's what we love about Seaside. They offer um, their personalities across their airwaves. And what I always say when you tune, in, tune into Seaside, it's like having a friend in your living room and they're just sitting there, spending company and just sharing um, their time with you. And uh, we love that about Seaside. So Frank was of that era where the DJ, not a computer as we have today, picked the songs and programmed the shows. Frank had his ear to the ground and knew what he wanted to hear on the radio. He knew what others wanted to hear. And he was the most popular DJ in the Maritimes for years. And no one has beaten his record or achievement since. A lot of great personalities followed, but Frank was the first and the biggest star of Nova Scotia. When his shows expanded to television as the Maritime host for Music Hop, the Cross Canada Variety Show on CBC, he launched even more artists' rec recording careers and became a national celebrity. Frank always played the hits first before everyone else. His story in this book is mixed with humor because Frank always loves to make you laugh. <laughs> Who hasn't had a laugh tuning into Frank? As you go on this journey with Frank, those great times of your youth will come back to you. Those moments that changed you, the path you chose, Frank was there. He was the thread of our youth and our growth. When the, when the radio was born and we could take our music and Frank with us, those were the days of the Coca-Cola, Hi-Fi Club, the Top 10, the CHNS Hits chart with Frank's pits, picks. And can you remember those numerous dance halls and high school dances. How about those shows and concerts at the arena? The weekend was ours. We were alive with our music and in the moment. When you look back, you realize that the songs connected us. It was a time when we all got to dream and a time when we all began to create our beautiful life's journey. It truly was our happy days. And Frank was there, the beacon who talked us through it all. And for that, as an artist and friend, Bobby Curtola said thank you. So a wonderful forward by Bobby Curtola. And so I went, to, I went digging on uh, YouTube, and I found this video, and it's Frank and Bobby at Seaside, and they're doing a program, um, doing, I think, a telephone, like raising money for the station. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah, singing yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I'm ready. Are we ready to rock? You're, we're ready. And if you want me to join in, Not, you don't ask. ask. <laughs> this is a Seaside 105.9 FM exclusive. Here All right. Bobby Curtola. And a medley of his hit. 
Lord, I've been waiting all night long just to tell you I was wrong. Always want to walk alone, hand in hand with you. Don't you, sweetheart, me? How can you dare? You've made a laughing stock of our affair. Don't you, sweetheart, me? When it's not true, I start by foolish heart, believing in you. And how about this one? Dum 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 dum. Ooh, there's a girl in school that I adore. She's a cute little girl, five feet four. Got a personality, the top of the town. She says three rows over. Two seats down. Dum, 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 dum. And how about this one? Fortune teller. Can you see what my future's gonna be? Can you see it all in your crystal ball? Have you got a dream for me? Bum, 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 bum. I had a strange, exciting dream last night. Da, 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 da. I was a water with no love inside. <laughs> when all at once I saw his magic light. Aladdin standing there. How about this one? Rub the lamp, rub the lamp. Oh, what would people say? What would people do? What would people say if people knew I was with you? Making love, making love. What a great idea. Making love, making love. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they care about. All I have to care about is you. Making love, well, well, making love. And how about, thought I was in love before. Then you moved in next door. Pretty blue eyes, pretty blue eyes. How about this one? Every night I hope and pray a dream of lover will come my way. That's a girl. You know this one, right? <laughs> I don't. How about this one? I'm off to Corina, 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 Corina. One of my favorite songs. Corina, Corina, I love you so. And how about this one? You ain't nothing but a half. That was the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Where did that Johnny is a joker. He's a bird. A very funny joker. He's a bird. But I'm when a he kiss, When he kissed my honey. He's a dog. His joking ain't so funny. What a dog. Johnny kissed the teacher trying to get next to my baby. He's a bird dog. Bum, 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 bum. Hey, bird dog, get away from my quail. Hey, bird dog, you're on the wrong trail. Bird dog, you better find a chick a little love your own. <laughs> hey, hey, bird dog, get away from my chick. Where's the book? The <laughs> mark of a professional is a guy that knows when to get off. <laughs> so I hope you found it humorous, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your kindness and keep those pledges coming in. You're right. making us happy over here at Cecil. Now we just came in and a big hug. I must have enjoyed it. Uh, oh my god! She, she gives me hugs all the time, so don't worry about do it. That. Anyway, anyway, it's really, it's that was coffee. really, really, really great. And uh, the thing is, if you liked it, uh, then please call us. If you didn't, if you you didn't like it, 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 if you call, if, if you uh, if you call and, and mention the name Bobby Venn, Bobby Z, it doesn't matter. Bobby, doesn't matter. As <laughs> long as you're giving us the money, please. <laughs> we're calling whatever you like, as long as you don't call them late for dinner. There you go. All right, four six nine forty seven hundred. Thank you for those pledges. Keep yeah. those phones ringing, gang. Seaside FM, especially and, for you. And okay, and uh, now. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be bringing you more great music from the 60s right after this commercial break.
of all, best of all, it's at the right price. What do you think of this jingle? He's here, isn't he? He is, Where? yes, actually. All the way from Beach Town. <laughs> he actually called and, and said he was coming home for the long weekend. He's in the military and station at Gage Town. And uh, he didn't know that I forced him to attend the show. But I also want to send a shout out to Frank's family here. Um, I understand there's some daughter and niece was it niece granddaughters yes maybe you could stand up and let us know who you are yeah welcome <laughs> nice to have you all here sister oh and sister's here yeah <laughs> and who else Chris? and nephew and his wife as well Nice that family are here tonight. You're up next to tell us what you know about Frank. I'm sure you can give us some news, some news stories that we can include tonight. <laughs> well, Rod, we're going to do a duet. Let's do are it. you ready? No. You got your Marvin Gaye voice. <laughs> this this song is it's a belter, so read, go on your tiptoes. That's why I don't have my guitar. I can't do both. 
Right? Okay, good, good. <laughs> we got this. Let's give it a try, Rod and I. You ready, Dan? Um, yes. <laughs> The next song will feature Jim Francis from Seaside FM and longtime volunteer at Oakwood Terrace on the tenor sax, Stu Ducklow on the baritone sax, and Chantal on the alto sax with their version of the song you may remember dancing to as a teen called The Bunny Hop.
like some of these dancers. Um, we have a couple who flew all the way from Vancouver to be a dancer tonight. ones. Um, Percy Perry, you'll see on the end. He was a Frank Bandstand dancer wannabe. <laughs> and tried to get on the show. And listen, finally you got your chance. He's on the Frank Bandstand show, showing off his dance moves. Give it up for Percy Perry. were on the show originally. I don't want to miss anybody, but they are tonight. Oh, did I miss someone? Oh, there we go. There's another six dancers that was on the original bandstand. So it's so nice to have this energy on stage with us. So thank you, dancers. Ladies and gentlemen, our Oakwood Terrace volunteer, Brian Rabideau, is going to bring you a song with a deep message. Buffalo Springfield released it as a single in 1966 with it peaking at number seven on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in the spring of 1967.
this special part of the show, we're going to ask Frank Hammer to come up here and share a few words with you. He was Anne Murray's lead guitarist for many years, by the way, when she was on tour. And I don't know whether uh, any of you know George, but he's just, when you hear somebody say, you know, he's the nicest guy I ever met, well, he's the nicest guy I've ever met. <laughs> anyway, I want this little shout out. Just a little shout out to George. Oh, God, you are grown. Yes. I'm higher than you, Frank. That's okay. You're, you're higher than me anyway, but anyway, it's okay. you're wearing heels. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, anyway, what are we going to talk about? Well, I just thought, I mean, I don't know if anyone's had a chance to see his book here, but I had a great read, and yeah. you shared so many great stories from your childhood, from your career, your broadcasting days, but I just thought you could tell us a little bit about who inspired you to set you up for the, the path of broadcasting that you wanted to do, to do since you were seven years old? Okay, well... There's I, many I, influencers I know you I know. just talked to a cameraman's daughter who's here tonight. He, I love him. I love him. He lives down the eastern shore, and I went looking for him a couple of times. He could find us out. So now I've got his phone number. Good. I've got a contact here, course, his daughter. Yeah. Yeah. But we had other, uh, I, wanna, I wanna mention the crew, first of all, on Frank Spenstad. Not only the crew that did that, but the crew that did the regular programming and still does to this day, only they've cut from 12 to now there's one. But um, CBC cuts, you know, it just happens. Uh, but I, I, um, I really enjoy work, people say, CBC, you worked at CBC, yeah, and I enjoyed every minute of it. I, you know, yeah, it was the government, or as, or as Donnie Cameron used to say, the government, the government broadcasting system. And um, I, I just, I never had a, a bad day. We had some. Well, okay, I'll tell you about one of those bad days. Okay, tell us. Um, the CBC decided. Uh, across the country that they were going to send out a series of satellite trucks. Now, this is a truck basically with a satellite dish on it, beamed to the satellite and back to Earth. Simple. Um, and they decided one night they were going to do the weather from Sidwell Hill. Well, okay, I went along with it. I went along with everything, unfortunately, but they uh, they said okay stand there Frank do and be ready to do the weather the cameraman still remember Jim Edwards I don't know whether Jim is still with us or not but he was a hoot and he said uh, and there was a, a thunder cloud circling <laughs> said Alvin. and all of a sudden it let go with all its fury 
Right in the middle of your weather right forecast. In the, well, in the, in the middle of the weather forecast, not only that, but I had an umbrella. And uh, good thing it wasn't mine. It belonged to the CBC. Um, so the wind gust came up and blew it inside out. That was the first, well, funny thing that happened. And then uh, a bolt of lightning didn't hit us or anything like that. And Jim uttered, well, I can't repeat what he said here, but it was something about getting the H out of here. And I said, uh, yeah, okay, I think we should. And then the skies opened up. Um, and I was wearing my suit, shirt, tie, all got soaked. And I said, oh, okay. Uh, after we finished the weather hit, I said, I'm gonna run home. I had to go to Dartmouth, but I run home, change, and come back because I had to do the late news. And so when I got back, the producer said, where the hell were you? And I said, well, I, I was changing. Well, I expected you to come back to the studio. I said, soaking wet. And get my death of cold. No, I, I thought that wasn't my plan. And he said, oh, well, it's, uh, it's okay, because uh, the crew, uh, trying to get Jim Nunn to laugh at anything. God love him, he's not with us any longer, and I love that guy. I don't care who loved him or hated him, it doesn't matter, I loved him. And uh, he said, uh, and Jim couldn't stop laughing. He'd never laughed on the air before, I guess. I don't know, but anyway, so um, I finally got back and they said, well, you're dry. I said, well, what the hell did you expect? I mean, I, 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 I had wet pants. I was soaked to the skin. Oh, yeah, well, uh, we expected you to come back in the wet. I said, oh, yeah. I'll do almost anything for my craft, but I'm not getting a bad cold because of it. No. So well, they thank worked you. you pretty hard at the CBC. Well, I did. They did. I enjoyed it every minute. I'm, I'm not kidding. But I, I really did. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. What, what else do you want to tell? Well, I was. Uh, any story you want to tell? Yeah. Okay. okay. This okay. is the rest of the show, guys. <laughs> yeah. No. No. But I, I laughed at one of the stories in your book. You were giving the weather. And you got a phone call from an American. Can you oh, tell yeah. that story? Well, yeah, I, I can tell that story. Uh, the Americans are, they literally went on the metric system before we did, but they did nothing about it. They didn't put it into practice. And so uh, I got a call as soon as the weather was over in the newsroom, and this guy said, hi, yo, I'm from Texas. I said, well, good for you. He said, <laughs> And I was watching your weather forecast, and you said it was going to be 28 degrees tomorrow? I said, yes, that's Celsius. He said, it's what? I said, it's Celsius. And I said, or centigrade if you prefer. I don't know what that is. All I know are American degrees. Oh, I said, you mean Fahrenheit? Yeah. He said, yes. So I said, well, no, 28 Celsius is like in the 80s in Fahrenheit. Oh, my God. Well, why do they do that? Is this a French plot or something? Or? I said, um, you know, well, you can say that as one, you know, but uh, he, he couldn't understand the difference in the... In the he wrote in, in your book, he said, never heard of it. Yeah, never heard of it. I only know American degrees. And I think that other stuff is French. I never had much use for French. Yeah, that's right. Hey, and we got more than that, more calls than that about uh, about Fahrenheit and, and so on. But but uh, I even got one at uh, Seaside one day, which is kind of funny because they, people call. One thing, one good thing about Seaside FM, and I'll tell you that right now, is that if your audience, if you want your audience to listen to you, you've got to listen to them. And uh, they will tell you, they're the first to tell you what's wrong and how you can fix it. And so, you know, you, you may go along with it, you may not, but it doesn't matter. The fact is that <clears throat> when, when we went to uh, this system, we had 
a guy on radio named Reed Dexter, who was a meteorologist, actually. And he used to call Fahrenheit foolish. And he said, uh, yeah, it'll be uh, 30 degrees um, Celsius, and it'll be 82 foolish. And people called him, what the hell is foolish? It's Fahrenheit, come on. Anyway, and that was 1972. There are still people. And I, I don't care if you want to do, who are using the old system here in Canada. And uh, when they go to Florida, of course, they're on Fahrenheit anyway. They shouldn't be, but they are. <laughs> and and um, you, you, you get, I love the public. That's one of the reasons why I'm in this business, because um, people, the people, are the listeners. And they want you to be funny, they want you to succeed in what you're doing, and they uh, they don't want any. They want silliness, but not at their expense, of course. You know, so, so that's what you have to watch out for. Anyway, go ahead. Now, everyone that knows you knows you're a man of many words. Yes. Yes. But sometimes we have to eat our words, Frank. And can you tell us some words you've had to eat? Oh, to eat? well. 1964, Tell I said, uh, I heard a Beatles song. It was called All My Lovin'. And uh, I said, who the hell are those people? And they said, well, the Beatles are from England. I said, they're never going to make it. When you call so them mop tops. I'm still tops, chewing on that one. You yeah. said the mop tops will never mop make tops. it. Mop tops, yes, I'm sorry. I called them mop tops. I said they'd never make it. Well, they kind of put the lie to me there. But well, okay. you had to change your okay, mind. We'll but, forgive you for that one. But I like Elvis. <laughs> I still like Elvis. I, I think um, um, somebody called me the other day. I played um, In the Garden, which is a great gospel song. And uh, I played it by Ann Murray. And somebody called me and said, have you heard Elvis sing that? I said, yes, I have. I have the recording here. Oh, play the Elvis one. Oh, he does that so well, and he does. I'm not, I'm not arguing with the guy. And so I played it by Elvis the next day, and he called back and he said, that's the one, that's the one. <laughs> and that's, but that's what our listeners do. Yes. And they want you to be as funny as you can be. I'm never funny as I think I am, but, <laughs> but they, want to, they want to say to you, you're doing a good job, and, uh, don't play so much Michael Bublé. And, uh, and, and he's Canadian. And he says something about our Canadian content, I guess. But anyway, yeah. But I like Bublé. I think he's very funny. He does funny commercials. But anyway, right? Oh, no. I love him. Oh, I see. Take okay. this away. Okay. So, Frank, we're just so thankful that we get to share this evening with you. Oh, I wouldn't have missed this. <laughs> I wouldn't have, I, I, and, and to me, Chantel, uh, i got to give her credit. This whole idea of doing the Frank Spence and thing was hers. <laughs> she was at the station one day and she said, have you ever thought of doing a Frank's Bandstand kind of revival? I said, no. And uh, she said, well, I'm going to do one. I said, carry on. So she, she did, and look, and listen to what's happening. Now, I want to note two special friends in the audience. Clyde yes. Warner and Linda Riggs are here. And I talk to Linda almost every day. And it was after a seatside show, we got to Gavin on the phone, and she said, Clyde says, maybe you should do a show and it should be a reunion, like a high school reunion. And we were thinking at, back then it was St. Andrews, was it? Yes, St. Andrews, we were thinking. And that's when we were talking about your Frank's Bandstand show. And I said, oh. We got kind of bouncing ideas, and I said, well, what if we did the Frank's Bandstand? So it was Clyde, Linda, and I. <laughs> okay, okay. I believe that because I know the two of them and I have known Clyde for a long time. We won't say how long that's been, but I've known him. 
Uh, remember those little things in the Chronicle Herald? Clyde Horner by Clyde Horner. Uh, well, that's him. He's here. By the way, my sister, you referred to her, is here, Beverly. Um, Beverly is much older than I am. But well, she doesn't look it. She, she's, she's, she's less than, she's, she's less than, she, no, be careful, somebody said. Okay, I'll be she's careful. She's up next. We want she, to hear some more Frank stories. She, uh, yeah, she, she, uh, Bev, uh, Bev and I go way back to our childhood. And, um, I remember one time she pushed me down the stairs. What? Yeah. And the only thing I got from it was a sore foot. No, it didn't break anything, you know. But then, we made up, and I've loved her ever since. I love her. I get she's in the audience, well, too. Well, so good you With some of her family yes. in the audience, too, by the way. You're yeah. a teacher in grade 11 and 12, English teacher. Oh. He gave you advice, and one was pursue your dream. Yeah. And his name was Wilfred Birchall, and... Uh, I don't know whether there's any new Glasgow High grads here, other than my sister. But um, Wilfred Birchall was the epitome of an English teacher. He had perfect grammar. He had, uh, and he could do cursive writing too, by the way. They don't, they don't do that anymore. Um, and he, and Wilfred. Um, uh, lived in in New Glasgow, and uh, he he kept he knew what I wanted to do, that I wanted to be on the radio. I didn't worry about television then because it was just not, it was nothing. It's still nothing, but uh, it, it, it's, it's okay. People watch it, but anyway, I I, um, I love that man because he taught me. Why well, he didn't? My father taught me cursive writing. My father was one of the best cursive writers ever, and he could curse too. You know, and he did. He did a lot of that. But uh, you know, he was an engineer. What can I say? Anyway, uh, but um, uh, Wilfred Birchall, uh, I have to give credit. Another person I have to credit is uh, a guy named Manny Pitson, who was the original producer of Frank's Bandstand. Manny ended up in Ontario teaching at a community college. Radio, I guess what he taught, radio and television. Um, but he, he taught me more about television than I think anybody else ever, ever did. Um, there are others too, Paul Bayless, and there, there are some, uh, and I keep seeing people here tonight who uh, said, God, they used to work at CBC. I know they did. You know, a lot of people work at the CBC. The Queen Mother one time was going through a lineup, and I was in, I was in the lineup, yeah. Uh, and she said, uh, she, she asked me where I worked, and I said, uh, CBC. And she said, how many people work at CBC? And I said, about half of them. And, <laughs> She actually laughed. Well, she was a Scot. She had a great sense of humor, and uh, I, I've never forgotten that one. And her, and I just loved her to pieces. She was, uh, she wanted to be queen, and she was queen. And then when she no longer was able to be queen, she was the queen mother, and that was that was fine, fine with her. And uh, I remember meeting her um, at Chillwater that her plane landed there, and so on. She got up, and she was, uh, she was just like you and I. She was, you know, um, what, can, I, can I say a commoner? I think she was more like, although, don't call her a commoner, because she was the queen. And um, I, I, I had a short conversation with her, but, you know, I, yeah. Um, other than that, um, well, we're glad you had this conversation with us. Well, thank you. And I, we're so thankful that you celebrate. Chris uh, has a book, by the way. So. Okay. <laughs> so, 
Okay, she will get it up in a second. <laughs> anyway, but that's fine. Anyway, go ahead. No, Frank, thank you for speaking my tonight pleasure. and being our guest of honor and remembering these. these uh, it's my together. pleasure. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, by the way, thank you for putting this stuff together. And I know you had help, but uh, it doesn't all matter. This wonderful exactly. Exactly. Rod over there, by the way. Rod worked for um, the Armed Forces Radio in Germany uh, when we had that big base over there. And so he's a graduate of the Armed Forces Radio College. And uh, we just don't, they don't have a college. I'm only kidding. But, but when he showed up, I said, aha, uh -huh, somebody with experience. Good. And he's here. And he's also a musician. Uh, we have a number of musicians at Seaside FM, by the way. Uh, just ask me, I've got their names uh, written on the back of the match cover, so let me know. Yeah. What, Donna? Oh, jeez, I've heard. Where's Donna? Donna Marilyn. Come up here for a second, please. I have, uh, I have known Donna before um, she came to Seaside because she's a singer and she sang with a couple of buddies of mine and then COVID hit and all hell broke loose and so on but you're back I'm glad you're back and I'm glad you're doing this for me because it's a privilege, it's a privilege. It, oh well it's okay my darling I love you okay If we keep them any longer, they'll think we're having a Pentecostal church service. And now, folks, we will be back to our regularly scheduled programming right after a word from our sponsor. saying why not let a tall, king-sized coat make things go better for you. Mmm, cold, crisp, never too sweet. Fun, food, and people. All need the bright, lively taste of ice-cold, king-sized coat to be really refreshed. No. 
even after a Coca-Cola bear. enjoyed our show. A big thank you to our talented band for bringing the music from the 1960s alive. Aren't they amazing? and sharing this, this special moment with us. And at the back, we have to thank our sound people. We do, yes. We've got Dan back here from this church, and he has just been so great at figuring out all the technology and making sure that we sound great. Um, we've got Matt Steele helping us with the soundboard. We've got Lauren from Oakwood that's helping with the slides and the audio visual. We can't do it without the whole team behind us. Seaside FM, thank you for being a sponsor for this and helping us get the word out there. And so together, let's tell our family and friends and neighbors that they can't miss next week's show on the 30th. Oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what? No way. Yeah, you have been oh, so amazing. Yeah. We've had so much fun doing this the whole week of us. home before, before uh, dancing to a few more tunes. How about it? I think this is a good one. The Beach Boys did this song. Everyone got their surfboards? Yes, let's do it. Rock, take it away. If everybody had an ocean across the USA
Say we are nearing the end of our show, but before that, we have a few more songs, and we have Olin Richard on the bass is going to showcase his vocals with a song that has been recorded by many artists. In 1966, the Beach Boys recorded a folk rock adaptation version of this song, topping the charts in many countries. The Beach Boys version of Sloop John B made the Rolling Stones list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. Enjoy.
Whoa.